If you're watching this video, most likely you have purchased or are thinking about purchasing the wall safe kit from Bentley House Minis. This kit can be made in two different ways, once as a safe that goes into the wall, or you can make it as a safe that sits on the ground. Here are the pieces you will receive in your kit, including this small pieces accessory bag. To begin, you want to cut through the tabs that are holding piece E into the mat board sheet. While all laser cut pieces are initially cleaned before packaging, I do suggest that you take the time to wipe down the sides with the provided cotton swab. To begin assembling the safe, go ahead and cut out the pieces you see on the screen. I am going to create the top and the bottom of the safe by gluing pieces F onto the face of piece E at the top and at the bottom. Piece E is perfectly square, so it doesn't matter which side you glue it onto. Just make sure that one F goes on the top and one F goes on the bottom. Next, we are going to be gluing the pieces marked G. The one that is marked GB is the one you will have to pay close attention to when it comes to its placement. G, just plain G, gets placed in between the two F pieces along the side of the safe. GB needs to have the hole that is cut into it facing towards the opening of the safe. This is for the locking mechanism and this is how it should be placed. Once these are all glued in, allow this to dry. This is the interior walls of your safe. Now we are going to add piece H, which is an optional piece if you would like to create a shelf within your safe. Simply add glue. There are no lines for its placement so that you can place it wherever you like. Eyeball it to make sure that it is horizontal and looks correct within the safe walls. Remove piece A from your mat board sheet. It also contains a piece that has other smaller pieces, so make sure to put that to the side and not to lose it. Piece A has two different sides. One side has some engraved markings and the other side is blank. You can choose which side you would like to face outward, which will be the one that will be seen. If you would like a more decorative safe, make sure to glue it like so. That is what I am going to go with in this tutorial. If you want it to be more plain, glue the other side. You are going to center it on the interior opening of the safe. It does not fit perfectly. There will be a very small lip. Just make sure that it is centered and straight. Now we're moving on to pieces B and C. B needs to be glued on top of C, and you wanna make sure that you are lining up the hole that is in the center. That is where the gear or the wheel will be inserted. So it's very important to make sure that those holes line up. Add glue, make sure that you can see the engraved shapes that you now see on the front of B once it is glued together, and put it under something heavy or clamp it to make sure it stays flat. You have two choices for the front door. You can use D that's plain or D with filigree that matches the decorative piece. I'm going to be using D with filigree. Once I have my piece, I'm going to turn it over and glue B onto the back. Make sure you follow the steps I just showed you. This will ensure that the holes line up once you glue the front of the door to the BC pieces you just glued together. Now I am adding glue to the back of the BC piece. I am lining up the hole and I'm using the toothpick that came in my accessory bag to push it through the hole and just double make sure that it's completely lined up and there's no obstruction once I start to add my wheel to the front. Now I'm going to let that dry underneath something heavy or clamp it so it stays straight. Once this is finished, this is a good time to sand your door or the body of your safe. If you want something that's just a little bit more curved, you can sand it. Just be sure to sand gently and away from the edge, not towards the edge so that the paper doesn't come up. Now your door should fit inside of your safe easily, just like you saw. Now we're going to take the door, flip it back over, and we are going to remove pieces O, N, and M. Leave the other pieces inside the square of mat board for now. These pieces need to fit inside the shapes that correspond with the pieces sizes. Just add some glue and then glue them into the spots that are shown. Once they are all three glued on, it should look something like this. 
Because these are such small pieces, I do suggest running a line of glue on either side of each piece. This will keep the paper from delaminating over the years and just add some further strength to these very small pieces. Now is a great time to do an initial coat of paint for the safe door and the safe body. I always suggest using an acrylic paint that has not been watered down. This is just straight out of the bottle. If you use watered down acrylic paint as at least your first layer on matte board, it could cause your matte board to warp. So at least for the first layer, make sure you use acrylic paint straight out of the bottle. I am doing a base coat of a very bright royal blue and then a top coat of silver and it gives it this really kind of bluish silvery tint, but of course you can do whatever paint color you choose for your safe. I painted the inside, the outside, and the front and back of the door. To create the wheel, you're going to need piece I and both pieces mark J and also the toothpick from the accessory bag. I cut off the pointed end of the toothpick and made sure it fit nicely in the hole in the wheel piece. If it does not fit very well, you can take the sandpaper that's provided in the kit and you can twist the toothpick inside of it and this will slowly sand down the radius of the toothpick so it fits easily within the hole. I'm now adding some tacky glue and I'm going to be slipping both pieces marked J onto the toothpick so that it sits in the glue. This is what's going to create the space between the wheel and the door front. I'm adding just a little bit more glue before I finally add the wheel on top of both pieces marked J. Once they are on, if my glue is still a little bit wet, I can slide it up so that the top of the toothpick is flush with the top of the wheel. And this is how the entire construction should look. Now I'm going to add a couple little details. These are not necessary, but just add a little bit more interest to your wheel handle. These are in the cardstock pieces that are marked wheel details. The large circle gets glued on the outer rim of the wheel and the small circle gets glued in the center to cover up the head of the toothpick. You can then go ahead and let this entire assembly dry and then add a coat of paint that's going to cover the bottom of the wheel and the top of the wheel. This is the best time to paint it before you add it to the safe. I'm using a coat of black and then later I will lightly brush it with some silver. While you have the paint out, you can go ahead and paint K and L while they are still in the matte board piece. These are going to be interior gear pieces, and so you can paint them whatever color you would like those to be. Next, I'm going to cut off a generous amount of toothpick. This is just so it's a little bit easier to work with, um, but I don't want to cut off too much. I don't want it to be too short. It has to have some other items added to the other side. I'm going to add the wheel through the hole in the door. Push it through gently, just making sure that it fits well. Everything should fit as long as it fit through the wheel hole. If you do have any troubles, again, you can go back with the sandpaper and sand down your toothpick. Once I have it in the hole, I'm just going to twirl it a bit to make sure that it moves smoothly. Now that the wheel is in the hole, I can go ahead and turn it over. I'm going to work on the gears that are going to go on the back that make this actually lock. Cut out the pieces K and L that were in the mat board that we just recently painted and lay them down like I'm showing you on the screen now. These need to be connected kind of like an elbow joint with the small piece of string that's in your accessory bag. All I'm going to do is add some glue to the very top or it's actually the side but the top side of this piece and then I'm going to bend it down and glue it to the back side of the piece that has a hole in it. This is going to create a string that goes around the corner and holds these two pieces together as they work within the safe. Here's a close up of how it looks. Pretty simple, but it's important to get this right so that everything works correctly. Before I attach it to the door, I'm making sure that my wheel is pushed all the way through and I'm going to cut off at the point where I think it is just enough so that I can push my gear onto it and it won't the toothpick won't be too short or too long. I'm cutting it off with some wire cutters. That's an easy way to cut through the toothpick. Now that I have just a small amount of toothpick showing through, I can push the piece that has the hole on it 
through and then this is how it should line up on the door. Once I have that through, I'm going to add a small amount of glue on top and I'm just adding a little bit of super glue. This is going to dry. I want to make sure not to get it on the door. The only place I am putting it is on top of that toothpick so that it connects the toothpick to that piece. Let it dry completely before following any other further steps. To make gluing the next part a little bit easier, I am pulling the piece we just made out of the door area where it was sitting nicely, and I am adding the pieces on the cardstock page labeled M and N on top of these smaller pieces that we added earlier. This is so that this gear will move a little bit easier once the top piece is in place, and I will show you how I do that. I'm just adding these with glue on top of the previously glued pieces and allowing that to dry. Once those are dry, I can add my gear piece back in there. And this is what kind of holds this gear in place while it is moving and while it is functioning inside of the safe. Once that's inside and free of the sides, I can add some more glue on top of the pieces I just put in place. And then I'm going to use the piece marked Q and glue that on top of those pieces. And this is what kind of completes this channel that the gear works within. This will keep it from popping out and causing problems with inside the safe. Once that's glued, you can make sure that it didn't accidentally glue the gear in place by moving it back and forth. Now we can move on to creating the false dials. These don't actually move, they just get stuck onto the front of the safe for looks. There are enough pieces to create three dials, each consisting of a piece marked P, and then the line of circles that are in the dial section of the cardstock sheet of paper. Once you have those removed, you can just stack them up in a tiered type fashion, making the dial. You can use all the circles provided or just use as many as you like to make it as tall as you like. Now that this is dry, I can go ahead and paint the interior working mechanism of my safe. These are just the final cardstock pieces that I added earlier. And I'm also going to paint the dials. I'm just it's easier to paint on my skin because I could just go wash my hands. I'm just giving a coat of acrylic paint and once those are finished I can glue them onto the face of my wall safe to create the dial effect. There are no markings on where to add these so you can add them wherever you like and you do not have to use all three. Now we're going to work on the hinges by removing the long rectangles located in the hinges section on the cardstock sheet. You're also going to need the remaining sewing pins and the cylinder beads from the accessory bag. Start by using some glue to add a cylinder bead to the center of the rectangle and allow that to dry completely. Once it's dry, you can add glue to one side of the cardstock and then you're going to fold it over on itself, making sure that the cardstock goes around the bead. Push the cardstock onto the other side, other piece of cardstock on the other side, pushing it down so that it rolls around the bead and creates a shape like this. This is going to create four hinge pieces that you can then cut into shape. You can create whatever shape you like. You will most likely have to cut them down to be a little bit shorter to fit on the safe itself. The ones you see here I have left a little bit too long so you will see that I cut them down a little bit later. And I also decide to cut off the edges so I have an angled look on the corners of my hinges. These end up being a little bit long. Here you can see that they stick off the edge of the face plate of my safe. And so I go back, follow the same steps, but cut them a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to lay them out on my safe. The lower hinge needs to be the hinge that gets attached to the faceplate of the safe and the upper hinge is going to be attached to the door. I also painted my hinges before I'm attaching them. I'm using the sewing pins that came in the accessory bag to make the hinge pin that is going to attach the two hinges together so that it can rotate. I'm putting it up through the bottom hinge. The pin is actually only going to be attached to the bottom hinge. Before I attach anything, I'm taking a set of wire cutters, I'm making a small crease into the wire itself, and then I'm using a tissue wrapped around it to catch the sharp pointy bit that's going to want to fly away. 
Now I have a smaller pin that should be the correct height to fit both of my hinges. I'm not going to put the top hinge on at the moment, I just need my bottom hinge. I'm going to be using gel super glue because I have found that it works best when working with hinges. I'm adding a little bit of super glue to the bottom of the pin and then threading it up through the hinge so that the glue will go on the interior of the hinge piece. Now I'm just going to let it dry completely. Once I've done that to both bottom hinge pieces, I'm going to lay my completed hinges with both pieces on it onto my safe. The top hinge piece is not getting glued to the hinge pin. It is just sitting on top of it loosely. I am first gluing down the bottom hinge to the face plate of the safe, and then I am gluing the top hinge, making sure that I don't get any glue on the hinge pin itself. I'm gluing the top hinge onto the door. This way, once the hinges are glued onto the door, it will sit on top of the bottom hinges that are glued to the face plate. I'm making sure that my wheel works and that I had lined up my hole correctly so everything will lock. And as you see, this door opens and the hinges work. And the door is removable because the top hinges are not glued onto the pin. You can just lift the door right off. If you decided to make a wall safe, you are done here. You can cut a hole in your wall that's the same size as the back of the safe and install it. However, if you wanted to make a floor safe, you're going to need to continue with these pieces. Starting with the two pieces marked R, you're going to want to add glue and glue these to the back of the face plate piece that was originally marked A. You're going to use one for the top of the safe and one for the bottom of the safe. Here you can see the top one attached and now I'm attaching the one to the bottom. Make sure it is on the back of the face plate and lined up against the edge. Now I'm going to add both pieces marked S and these are going to be the side pieces that complete the enclosure for your safe. Make sure that they line up in between the two R pieces and glue them in place. Now you're going to find the piece marked T and whichever remaining piece that you have from D. So I still have the plain D. I'm going to cut that out and use it. You won't see it, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm going to glue D to the back of my safe. This is going to reinforce the back and make it easier to glue piece T on and make sure that nothing is going to move or be weak inside this structure. Once that's glued on, I can add more glue to this piece that I just added and also glue to the outside edge of the R and S pieces. And then I can take T, glue it so that the engraved letter is hidden and this makes up the back of my safe. Now I'm going to grab my final pieces from my mat board sheet, the pieces that are marked U and V. These are going to create the legs for the safe. These are optional. You can always have a safe that doesn't have any legs, but I find that they add a little bit of a decorative look. I'm going to add the long pieces to the front and back of the safe, and then I'm going to be adding the short pieces in between on the sides to complete the base. After completing all these steps, you have successfully put together your floor safe that can sit on a floor or a shelf, wherever you'd like it to be. All you need to do is sand if you want to sand and then paint it to match the rest of your safe. And it is convenient that the door comes off the way the hinges are made so that you can paint it without worrying about getting anything on your door. You simply slide the door back on. Make sure that it closes, and if you do feel like your door is sticking a little bit, you can use some sandpaper on the inside to correct that. Just lightly sand on the interior until the door fits in. That's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed creating this kit. As always, if you want to show me what you created, you can tag me on Instagram with Bentley House Kits. And if you're interested in purchasing more kits like this, you can always go to bentleyhouseminis.com. Thanks for watching.